If you're looking for a video on a specific topic, simply type in what you're looking for in my channel search bar. And if I have videos addressing that topic, it will take you right to them. What's up you guys, it's Adana. I am back with another video for you guys. So welcome to everybody that has not been to my channel before. Thank you guys so much for dropping by. Stay a while, subscribe, hit that subscribe button right now and follow me on Instagram at Adana the PA. And for those of you who've already been here, welcome back you guys. So you know I am in my second year PA school and I just wanted to talk to you guys about clinical rotations, but specifically setting them up. Now. Um, um, not every school is like this. You know, I'm only speaking from my personal experience. That's the only experience that I can speak from. But for me, I knew that I would like to do my clinical rotations back home. I wanted to be closer to family um, because I moved my whole family down to where I'm currently at. And, you know, we moved away from our immediate family, from Nana and Gigi, you know, your built-in babysitters. So, you know, you have to kind of do this thing on your own, just you and the hubby. And we didn't really have a good network set up down here. So I was like, all right, we're, we're probably going to just be gone for a year. And I want to do my rotations back home because that's more than likely where I'm going to be practicing. That's where I'm going to be living ultimately when school is done. Um, so I definitely talked about that and asked that in my interview. So definitely make sure that you know beforehand, you know, don't just go in there assuming, hey, I can go in and set up my rotations away from this school. And I can do them all away and it's not going to be a problem because not every school is like that. And some schools actually restrict that, you know, they set them up for you. Make sure you ask if that is something that you want to do. Make sure that you ask about that if that's even an option. Um, for me, it was. And so I knew that since my school was fairly new, I would have to pretty much kind of do everything on my own because we wouldn't have affiliation set up where I was from. Um, there may have been some set up, but with respect to making sure that I can get the preceptors and all of that, I figured that I'd have to do it on my own. And I went in there with that mindset from the beginning, like from summer session, I was like, all right, so what exactly do I need to do? Like, who do I need to call? Who do I need to contact? Um, so that is something that you definitely need to do right when you get in there, make sure that you know who your contact people are, for rotations, they're probably not gonna start talking to you about rotations like in detail until halfway through your didactic year or closer to the end of didactic year. But that doesn't mean that you can't already be thinking and also doing the groundwork to try to find those rotation sites. For me, what I did was I made a spreadsheet. Um, we had a spreadsheet of the different rotations that I knew that I, I needed. Um, so the different specialties, I had them listed out in different colors and then I had all the names of physicians in my area that I wouldn't mind um, rotating at and I put them in the spreadsheet on Excel and I literally cold called everybody like I call I went I'd be like hey my name's Adana. I was wondering, do you guys take students for clinical rotations? Um, and if they were like, yes, we do, then I'd be like, oh, great, because I'm looking for a rotation for this. And then usually they're like, oh, well, you know, um, you know, we're not accepting any until, you know, the fall or the summer. And I'm like, well, um, that's great because my rotation doesn't start until next year. And um, this is the date. And so I always had everything set up with respect to the exact dates once I got that. That information had the exact dates, exact um, length of time in terms of from what date to what day and how much time I needed to be on that rotation. Um, it's essentially a job, so 40 hours a week. And then now that I was, you know, just last semester, since I was close to two rotations, we had a more detailed information on what was expected from the preceptor. And so for that, I gave them those that information. I sent that information to them to see if that was something they were comfortable doing and if that was something that they were able to fulfill because there are certain obligations that they have have to do with respect to giving me an evaluation and you know like either well we can ask for it midway through but we have to have an evaluation by them and that's part of our grade so I wanted to make sure hey you're able to fulfill that that was always you know you're always gonna 
you're always going to want some that and, and the information and anything that pertains to you more than anybody else. You know, they already got their job. They're not, you know, trying to get a job. So they're going to be busy, you guys. So you have to remember that. And it's the same thing with like your letter of recommendations and different things that you're asking people to do for you. You're going to have to kind of be persistent. I literally, I called people for like a good six months before I actually got on to some of these people. And I mean, it's just what I had to do because I knew that I wanted to be back home. So it's going to take some work. It's definitely going to be a little bit time consuming, but it's doable. You can do it. Just prepare. Make yourself a spreadsheet. Whoever said yes, I would put a green. Whoever said no, I'd just kind of X them out with a red. I would then send that information to my clinical coordinator. Um, so most schools have a clinical coordinator that is setting up these rotations. Some schools already have rotations set up for everyone. And so you'll have to talk to your clinical coordinator to be like, hey, you know, I want to do two rotations at home or I want to do a rotation in, um, Massachusetts or Nevada or wherever it is that you want to do a rotation that you may have family um, you want to go there for that month and then you guys can work that out because there's gonna be like affiliation paperwork if there's no affiliation set up and that takes time so give yourself at least a good three months before to make sure that you have enough time to set up the affiliation paperwork because you don't want to come to the month that you're supposed to be doing your rotation and then you don't have the paperwork in and then you can't do it and well, you can't do it where you want to do it because they're gonna put you where you need to be. It just may not be where you want to be. So just keep all of that in mind when you're setting it up. Cold call, don't be ashamed to do that. Don't be afraid to do that. Um, you'll be surprised how many yeses you actually get, but from there, it's just kind of making sure that you stay on top of those yeses to get the paperwork done so you can actually um, get the rotation that you want at the site that you want um, and in the location demographic graphic wise. So I hope this was very, very helpful. Thank you guys so much for watching. I really appreciate each and every one of you. If you have any questions or comments, leave them in the comment section below and I will talk to you guys next. Bye!